This is part two of my domain and range video. Uh, in this video, we're just looking at graphs. Not doing too much algebra right now, but we'll come back and do an algebra-based domain and range video after this. So in the first video, I took, I took a look at uh, nine graphs. Didn't really focus on the function rules at all. Some of them weren't even functions, they were just relations, but we found domain and range. Remember, domain and range, by definition, the domain is the set of all x values, and the range is the set of all y values, the output values that you get from inputting an x value into a function or a relation. So in this case, we're looking at a function y is equal to negative x, right? Slope of negative one goes through the origin, the linear function. The domain and range of this, again, we'll assume that it goes on forever. We'll put arrows on those, on the ends there. Uh, the domain and range of this is everything. No restrictions. It goes up and to the left forever, and it goes down and to the right forever. So every x value possible is or every x value on our in our real number system is possible and same thing for the range no restrictions whatsoever number 11 number 11 is a square root function here we have a radical and then a radicand x plus 3 so we can see here that I graph this and we can pick our graph up at this point which is negative 3 comma 0 and if we plug in negative 3 right here, we get the square root of 0. So the output of that would be 0, which means negative 3 comma 0 is, in fact, a, open, a kind of a closed circle there. It is a point on our graph. So that means that negative 3 is the beginning of our domain, and 0 is the beginning of our range. So this is how we would write that. Our domain, and again, in the last video, I, I sort of you know, gave you a bit of a hint here, a bit of a tip. You know, as you're looking at domains visually, pick up your pencil, put it down vertically, and just sort of slide it across from left to right. And you see that the pencil picks up the graph at negative three, and includes negative three, and then everything thereafter is also in the domain. So the way that we write that is bracket negative three to positive infinity. Infinities always have open parentheses, and the range is is a is a horizontal inspection. So you put your pencil down this way now, and you just want to sort of slide it up until it hits the graph. And you can see that it hits the graph right there at zero, and it goes forever up. It increases forever, and that means that our range is from zero to infinity. Just like that. All right, and I'll mention briefly uh, the algebra behind this. I'm not going to go through a lot of algebra here, but the uh, when you're trying to calculate domain algebraically, you're really thinking about what x values can't work. And I'll give you uh, an example of one that can't work. If we have, if we wanted to put in negative four, for example, in for x. So I'm asking a question, can x be negative 4? Well, let's test it. If we put negative 4 in for x, we get the square root of negative 4 plus 3, which is the square root of negative 1. That does not reside in our real number system. So therefore, it is not on our coordinate plane, our real plane. So that's not going to be good. Anything that's over here, any point that's to the left of of negative three comma zero is not in your set of uh, points so therefore it's not in the domain and the range is you know pretty much everything you want to think about every every y value that's possible and sometimes it's even it's easier to think about what's not possible in other words we can't have any values underneath our x-axis because the uh, square root of something can never be negative in our real system so uh, and there is a bit of a trick to that sometimes, you know, to find algebraically to find the range, you just, you know, pull an old inverse, you know, you're trying to find the, uh, the domain of our, uh, of your inverse. Uh, the way that it goes is if, when you find your inverse, which 
I'm not going to do in this video, but algebraically to find the range, uh, the range is going to be equal to the do the range of your original function f of x is actually equal to the uh, domain of your inverse, uh, which is kind of a cool thing. The domain of your inverse is equal to the range of your original. Uh, I'll probably do a whole separate video on that when I get to the algebra behind this stuff, but let's continue. Number 12, again, we have a, uh, a rational exponent here, which uh, if you remember actually transfers into uh, the fourth root of x. So again, we can't have any negative values here in our range or in our domain. So the way that we would write that is our domain zero is okay because we can plug in, we can find the fourth root of zero. The fourth root of zero is zero. So the domain is cool at zero. We close it. We close that bracket a little bit better. And it goes on forever to the right. The range, same deal. We're allowed to have zero. Zero is good. And believe it or not, even though it doesn't look like it increases forever vertically, it actually does. Number 13. So cubic function has an odd exponent right here. And that means that we're going to go the end behavior here. One side goes up, one, one side goes down, which tells me that my range and my domain both are all real numbers. All real numbers. No restriction on the domain, every value. Uh, left and right is eligible and also for the range every value up and down is eligible. Another way of writing that of course is to write it like this negative infinity to positive infinity. Number 14. All right, This one's interesting it is a fourth degree function negative lead coefficient translated three units up one two and three so because of that lead coefficient being negative and because we have an even exponent, this thing is going to be open down, uh, which affects our range, right? Our range cannot go above here. The maximum value on this is right there. The domain, on the other hand, has no restrictions. This is going to go left and right forever. As, as much as it goes down, it is still creeping a little bit to the left as much as it goes down over here it is still creeping a little bit to the right and that'll do that forever the range on the other hand goes from negative infinity to positive three so it's everything below three three is our max our max uh, y value there zero comma three all right moving on 15 15, we're looking at a function one over x. And I graphed this for us <clears throat> as well. So we're seeing that we have domain and range restrictions. Again, domains you want to start thinking about. You want to start thinking about up and down. So as we scan in from the left, we see that it goes from negative infinity. And then all of a sudden we see that we have an asymptote right there. And the asymptote is seeing that at x equals zero. And the reason that <clears throat> that there is a break at zero is because if you wanted to plug in zero in for x, you wouldn't be able to yield a a value. One divided by zero is undefined. So that gives us a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So long story short, it goes from the domain goes from negative infinity to zero it's open because you can't actually be zero and then we throw in a union there which is basically just a u and we write it like this it picks back up at zero can't be zero but it could be like point zero 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 one and goes all the way to positive infinity and the range uh, let me get this green thing out of there the range from bottom to top we're scanning, we can see that it goes negative infinity, can't be zero, picks back up at zero, 
and goes to positive infinity. There's a horizontal asymptote here because our output value will never be zero. So that's how we write that. If there's just one single value that is impossible, this is how we would write it in what we call interval notation. All right, moving on. Almost done here. Number 16 is, again, similar to the last one, looking at a function where we have some uh, asymptotes here, <coughs> and the domain has a restriction. Domain, algebraically here, I'll mention very briefly that the algebraic idea is when, when you have a fraction like this and there's a there's the x term in the denominator, you're thinking about what that denominator, uh, what, what x value will turn that denominator into zero. Remember, we can't divide by zero. So x in this case can't be negative 5 because if it were, negative 5 plus 5 would be zero. You can't have 3 over zero. And you can see that there is a, I guess it's kind of hard to see, but there is a vertical asymptote at negative 5. And the way that we would write that, the domain is everything except negative 5. If you wanted to use what we call set builder notation, you would say the domain is everything in the real number system. And it can't be, x can't be negative 5. And this bar in, in math means uh, such that. And this is, this symbol right here means is an element of, and this is the real numbers. So we read this x is an element of the real numbers such that x cannot equal negative 5. Something like that. That's what we call a set builder set builder notation. I'm a little rusty with that, so if, I think I think that's right. Anyway, I'm off track again. We uh, want to talk about the range negative infinity to, looks like we have a horizontal issue here at zero again. So it's everything except zero. Cool. Last one. Trigonometric function of cosine cosine you can see is a uh, harmonic uh, graph and it goes sort of serpentine up and down forever and ever and ever and this is the regular parent cosine it's very standard it goes from positive one to negative one and it just keeps bouncing back and forth so our domain is unrestricted our range is restricted big time from negative one to positive one closed <clears throat> and uh, that about covers it. So as always, make sure you uh, hit subscribe so you don't miss any videos. I'm going to uh, post a bunch of videos today. Coming up next, we have, you know, we're going to talk about piecewise functions, composite functions, symmetry of functions, evaluating functions, composite functions, all sorts of cool stuff. So, and I'll also get into uh, the algebra behind all this domain and range business. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.